Sponges, Nidarians, and Worms. A long time ago, people thought sponges were more like plants. But unlike most plants, sponges take food into their bodies. Sponges don't look or act like most animals you know. They are invertebrates, meaning they lack a backbone, and they have no body symmetry and lack true tissues and organs. An adult sponge is sessile, meaning they are anchored in place and are unable to run and hide from predators. With over 9,000 known species, sponges come in all shapes, sizes, and color. While some consist of a single cone-like structure, other sponges branch out irregularly all over the seafloor. They're covered in these tiny pores all over their surface. These pores allow water to move into the central cavity, bringing food with it. They're also protected by thin, tiny spikes called spicules that form a rigid frame. Sponges can produce, reproduce sexually or asexually, depending on the species. Nadarians include jellyfish, sea anemones, and coral animals. These invertebrates share two characteristics. They have radial symmetry and tentacles with stinging cells. Nadarians also have two kinds of body forms. The first is a polyp, which is a cylindrical body with tentacles radiating from one end, kind of like a sea anemone. The other body form is the medusa, which is an umbrella-shaped form with fringes of tentacles around the lower edge, just like the one pictured here. Nadarians have specialized stinging cells used for defense and capturing prey called nidocytes. These nidocytes are throughout the tentacles and they are in a type of capsule called a nematocyst. The nematocysts contain a fine coiled tube that often has a poisonous barb at the end. When this is released, the barb from the nematocyst can penetrate and release poison into the prey. This is what you feel if you are ever stung by a jellyfish. Nadarians reproduce both asexually and sexually. However, asexual reproduction allows the numbers of polyps to increase rapidly in a short period of time. Polyps such as hydras, corals, and sea anemones have budding, which is the most common form of asexual reproduction. However, some polyps just pull apart, forming new polyps. Scientists classify worms into three major groups, flatworms, roundworms, and segmented worms. All worms are invertebrates that have long, narrow bodies without legs. They are the simplest organism with a brain, which means they have sense organisms that are sensitive to light, touch, and vibrations. Some species of worms reproduce sexually and others reproduce asexually. The species that reproduce sexually have separate male and female organisms. Other species have both a male and a female sex organism. And then other worms reproduce asexually by methods such as breaking into pieces. If you were to cut these worms into several pieces, a whole new worm would grow from each piece. Just as their name suggests, flatworms are flat. These include worms such as planarians and tapeworms. Many flatworms are parasites, which means they live inside another organism and take food from its host. The host is the organism in which the parasite lives on or lives in. Roundworms have cylindrical bodies and have a digestive system that is like a tube open at both ends. Food travels in one direction through the roundworm's digestive system. The food enters the animal's mouth and wastes exit through an opening called the anus at the far end of the two. This type of digestive system enables an animal's body to absorb a large amount of needed substances in foods. Segmented worms have bodies made up of many linked sections called segments. Just like the roundworms, segmented worms have a one-way digestive system with two openings. They also have a closed circulatory system, which means that blood moves only within a connected network of tubes called blood vessels. This is super important because the closed circular system can move blood around an animal's body much more quickly than an open circulatory system can.